Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and uh, I'm going to have to give Avi a haircut since he just lost his hat on this last boat tour up the North Shore <laughs> Channel in the North Branch of the Chicago River. Please stay tuned. Go ahead. Well, Terry wasn't kidding. I really did lose my hat, as you can see. But it's most important to note that, hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Now, uh, Javier Salazar, he's on the radio. He's communicating with Larry Conroy, who's piloting the boat. Yeah. And his job is to, uh, you know, direct the movement of the boats uh, so we get to the right place at the right time. So to get the trail going down. Yeah. And he'll just... Uh, release that uh, grappling hook over the side and uh, pay out the cable before we get to the chain. And the boat will just pull the chain, the grapple along until we hit the chain. There. Then we'll winch the whole chain up, put the chain on that uh, donkey winch there, there, and determine which side you know, of, of the sand housing we're on. Okay. And they'll, they'll move that winch back or one way or the other until we get to the sand housing. Yeah. Um, it'll lift up and I'll pull it on board and either Pat or Bob will uh, um, unlock you know, the holder and so I'll pull out the uh, sand and uh, exchange it. This is, uh, this is an example of what the sand looks like. Yeah. And inside there you see various probes for various uh, measurements. Yeah, I'll, you know what, what later on I'll well, ask you to get video later on this yeah. sunny. I just have to sink these things and I want to get the trowel right, right now. Trowel. Okay. Trowel you put... T-R-A-W-L? T-R-A-W-L, yeah. Okay. Trowel. T-R-W-A-L. Yeah, okay. W-A. They can usually tell when they have it because the line will tighten up and the boat will stop moving. <laughs> He'll go back up. Hello. Now they'll actually be bringing the boat back to where the chain is. It is. It's here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's happening. Yeah, they're pulling us back now. And he rather than overrun the, uh, the chain and the sign, PDOs will be communicating back and forth and you know, saying, you know, forward a little bit, you know, push a little forward, yeah. you know, right forward, left rear, you know, aft, and, you know, directing the movement to the boat. don't want to get right over it because if you get a chain uh, caught in the propellers or something, then we have to cut the chain off. It's a long, slow trip home. And yeah, I hear See, there's a chain there. Yeah. Now they'll lift it up a little bit more and put it on that lower wing. sitting there for about a week? Yeah, it's been sitting in there since last Tuesday.
off the chain and off we go. Okay. There's no more tests or anything after that, or? No. It's straight back to Lawrence. Yeah, we'd be going right back to Lawrence. Gotcha. Now. sensors sure. on one of those. Sonny, we're going to take a look at the sensors in those things. Yeah, you can open it up. This is, uh, we call them SANS remote sensors. Yeah. Um, and inside, they have, uh, you know, various probes, you know, that uh, will analyze the water for different constituents, the salt, oxygen, pH, temperature. There's other ports to put in other probes, yeah. other types of sensors, uh, depending on what our um, environmental monitoring and research people want to look at. Yeah. Doing this? Yeah, every or? day we do a different stretch of the water. Today is a Tuesday, so we come up along the North Branch, uh, yeah. up as far as Main Street. Uh, sometimes we'll extend it all the way up to uh, Wilmette, yeah. you know, Wilmette Harbor. Uh, other days we'll do... Uh, the Chicago Sanitary Ship Canal yeah. and uh, uh, focus on that area down to Lamont. Uh, another day we'll uh, go all the way down the Calsag Channel to uh, uh, Calumet and uh, the O'Brien Locks on uh, the Calumet River and the Calsag yeah. Channel. Uh, and then we also do a lot of uh, special studies for both our own purposes and uh, with other governmental organizations such yeah. as uh, the USGS, the EPA, uh, university. USGS is Geological uh, Service? Yeah, U.S. Geological Survey, yeah. right. Uh, and the district supports uh, a lot of different researchers and a lot of different projects. Uh, we have the, uh, you know, the material and capability to do that. Um, and um, generally, they'll be coming along when we're going out anyhow. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't add much in the way of expenses. Yeah. You know, we just bring people along so they can do their work as well. Again, this is a, another in you know, our discharge. You can see how you know, the water currents swirl in here. Yeah. And, uh, oh, is this aeration, or that's from? Uh, that, this is the discharge from the sewage treatment plant on the north side. Oh, from Howard. Yeah. Right. And it's just showing how the water mixes in here. By the way, I'd be remiss on any show I do with Terry if I didn't at least say once, Hi, Kathleen, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but they tend to just fly right in front of the boat. Yeah. I see the nest. Yeah, Sonny, yeah, get the nest on the uh, cell phone tower. Uh, like, you know, 
fish dying or uh, reported discolorations in the river. We'll also support uh, community events such as the recent uh, uh, rubber ducky races. Okay. <laughs> Charity. Oh, well, I don't. I don't. I didn't know anything about them. Yeah. You ever get seasick? Hmm? You ever get seasick? This boat is steady as a rock. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, I have to admit, it, I, I don't get seasick at all, but... Uh, no, I don't. No. Uh, and uh, none of our crew have particularly contained it. Yeah, this is extremely it. steady. I have spot. Well, oh, well, the river is very calm. Yeah. And we're going five, six knots, uh, which isn't a lot. Plus, you got land right next to you on both sides. Right. right. Oh, how does, oh, so that means there's not a lot of uh, stuff back and forth? Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, well, there's no real open area to build waves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, either it has to be coming, to, you know, right up or down the channel. If you're and out on pretty a, hard to build up yeah. waves in here. If you're driving out on a boat, if you look at the water, it's when you get sick. you got to look at the horizon. No, I say. Oh, it's same thing like if you're spinning around, like when people spin around, they, they have a focus point. Yeah. yeah. You might be spinning, but you keep your eyes but at you a got, certain point, exactly. and that way you don't get... Uh, Right, it lessens the impact. Yeah. Actually, when I was a kid, I used to enjoy spinning around and getting dizzy. <laughs> Ken, I'm surprised you guys aren't involved in that uh, epidemiology study that we're doing. Oh, we are. Oh, they are? We, we were involved in the initial stages of it. Okay. Uh, but I mean, dry weather and wet weather studies. But I mean, what? as participants, you know, <laughs> well, being, what's it, being epidemiology? A, it's a uh, study that we're doing right now with the University of Illinois. No. determines people's contact with the water to see if there's any illnesses or anything that well, I know it could be skin like yeah. as an epidermis so yeah. like skin rashes or you know flu like symptoms and things yeah. like that and it's just something that we're doing with uh, people that use the Chicago River people lakefront uh, people have no contact with I mean, know, I was just so worried because you know like there are because there are things that people are exposed to here that they wouldn't ordinarily well they Okay, Sonny, could you get a shot over there real quick? What is that? It's an outfall. Yeah. It's an outfall of combined sewer over the uh, okay. This is Pratt yes. Avenue here. That's a, a main interceptor sewer that comes down Pratt. And uh, in you know storm conditions in the old days before the tunnel, yeah. they might have to divert you know the rainwater you know through there out into the river to avoid flooding. And now we got the rain blockers instead of making it impossible for anybody to get to my house on Pratt. Well, I can't, I can't express that. <laughs> um, by the way, so getting back to the epidemiological study. For, uh, so you, 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 you t you're taking samples of people that are in the boat, people that have constant contact with the water, people with no contact and this to see if there's any... Oh, there's a turtle right behind you, Sonny. Yeah. We have oh, a yeah, turtle. Right on a branch. That's where you'll see him on the branches. On the himself. branch. I wanted a turtle. Well, if I see another one, I'll tell you. Uh, sorry, this, um, yeah, there's, 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 there's the first one I saw. Oh no, there's another one. No, no, no never mind. That's branch. Uh, well, beyond the branches that are kind of sloping into the water, they'll crawl, crawl up there and get the sun and warm up. So, getting back to epidemiological, which I only interrupted 14 times at this point, um, you're trying to see if, if there's chemicals here that make a difference. Any correlation to being in contact with the waterway system as far as becoming ill. So you're taking other preventative than, actions rather than yeah. before it happens to make sure that nothing like that happens. Yeah, and one of the, Ken was just talking about a study that they just completed was sampling during dry weather period and also sampling during wet weather period. And, and, and I mean, is the survey still ongoing? Is there a, they um, done it's findings? Or, thing, yeah. yeah. Uh, and is the University of Illinois? Well, that's what the epidemiology study we're doing with the University of Illinois. another turtle there. Same on that branch. There's a turtle right there. Sunny. Turn! Other right way! Nope, he just went, went on. But, uh, you know, that all started from the uh, use of sustainability study. Yeah, analysis. And, uh, or analysis, I should say. And that's part and parcel of, uh, of the use of sustainability study. In other words, what can you safely use the waterways for? Uh, and uh, the uh, waterways are kind of classified as you know, primary contact. Uh, which is, you know, really good quality waters that, yeah. uh, uh, you know, people swim in, fish in. There's, you know, very low risk of uh, illnesses, yeah. you know, waterborne illnesses. There's secondary contact waters, which are, you know, waters that are uh, usable for activities 
things that don't uh, involve direct contact or immersion. In other words, it's not good for swimming or other like, activities. I can't imagine that this might be considered great for swimming. That's no, not. This is a secondary contact. Gotcha. Up in here. Uh, you know, but it, it means doesn't that you're not, you're not likely to get sick if you splash it on you. Yeah. Uh, there might be some issues if you swallow it or inhale it. When I told a few people that I was doing this, they were all saying, boy, it's going to stink. And you know what it does? Except when we passed by the, 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 the plant itself on Howard, it didn't smell bad. Yeah. I don't think anything smelled bad at all. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I mean, it's perfect. And it's a nice warm Water's day, too. Water's constantly moving. Yeah. It's a nice warm day, and yeah. if anything's going to reek, it would reek. Uh... So anyhow, as part of this new sustainability study, Yeah. Uh, have, the district has done, along with the consulting firm, some studies uh, of viruses and bacteria, uh, pathogens in the waterways that uh, may be increased or decreased by you know, our treatment system. Uh, done that both in dry weather, uh, so where we can you know, assert that you know, this is likely coming out of one of our treatment plants or out of a side street weather uh, where it, it can be attributed to, uh, you know, the sewer overflows and wash off, runoff, yeah. and seeing whether or not this, uh, you know, if there's a significant difference in viruses and salmonellas and bacteria. Now, this was land that we owned that we sold to uh, the Chicago Board of Education. Well, this is for the North Chicago side, Prep. North That's side considered prep. one of the first, first or second... Uh, on the top of public schools, high schools. Yeah. Uh, but, you, but you still own the stuff near here, or you sold all of it? No, we sold the property to them. So they've yeah. even got these we, banks well, we got, No, we got 90 feet off the center line here. So, But they did all the, the prairie grass vegetation. Yeah, this used to be... What, what, was this a National Guard thing before? Or? Yeah, it used to be the Streets and Sanitation Yard. And oh, okay. Then, uh, the Army was here. Yeah, too. there was National Guard stuff. Yeah. It's also... Okay. is that district property. And, uh... Are any of these people actually paying rent? No. And, I mean, I know you guys declared rent stuff, but basically, uh, they, uh, the residents took you guys to court? Uh, and vice versa. So we're in litigation with them right now. What we've done is, uh, we've marked all the properties with, uh, markers. We've had surveyors come in. So... I mean, these are just simple things, but, uh, I mean, in theory, can these people just put it up on their property and lower it and not pay you for the, the launch, or? That's basically what's happened. What? That's basically what has happened, so, I mean. But, I mean, this over here is a little more elaborate. Yeah. I mean, who's ever got these things can certainly afford. And now, I, I don't know what the buildings look like from the other side. Are these, like, actually really nice, expensive? They're homes. They're regular homes. Oh, they're single-family yeah. homes? Some, and then you have, oh, I see some apartments here. Unit. This is definitely a major advantage to this property for years if they're not paying rent. Now, how much back rent are you guys, are you guys going for, like, years worth of back rent? Or? No, we're just trying to get uh, get covered from a liability standpoint and generate some revenue because, uh, by statute, you know... It's your land. It's our land, and it, it should be leased appropriately. And uh, what happens is, you know, some of these docks, if they're not structurally sound... Exposure is going to be greater from the standpoint of potential accidents. So. Quite a few. People leave yeah. here all winter? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're in here all winter. And they're not, it's not unsafe or anything? Or? No. River doesn't freeze up here, so. Uh. Now that looks like an affluent house. Speaking of affluent, <laughs> which was Bogoyevich's. <laughs>
What's the reason for the no wake sign up here? Huh? No, I mean, that means you're not supposed to splatter, or is that because of the docks and stuff? Or? Well, the boats start rocking if you cause damage, and a boat that makes a wake is liable for any damage that it causes. So if we went blasting through here, and, you know, their boats are banging up against the docks or something, the district could be liable, or anybody with the boat going through here could so be the, liable for the damages. So the no wake is more of a warning sign to these boats to not... Um, as opposed to this it's, boat. It's, 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 it's a warning sign for this boat. In other words, slow down. Don't make a wake or waves yeah. you know, with your boat. Because uh, it will cause damage to you know, structures or uh, boats on, on the shore. Yeah. So if we went rushing through or any boat went rushing through, these boats would start rocking and banging up against the dock. Oh, yeah. And if they take damage and no cause the wake, Liable, you know, for the damage done. Well, some of these, some so, of these places are pretty elaborate. Yeah, some of them are very nice. Some of them are just the opposite. I've noticed some of those. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this is side of the world. I, you know, I just knew from reading in the paper. I never actually knew it was here. I believe that. These docks kind of got started as an extension uh, from back in the uh, Depression era. In the Depression, people that couldn't afford housing, they'd find anything that floats and they'd put it in the river up in this oh, area, build shacks on it, and they'd live on that because wow. nobody would bother. And those, uh, you know, houseboats or house shacks or whatever, you know, just rotted away, been towed, towed away over the years. And the tradition of living on the river just kind of, you know, expanded through this area. This is like the That's, village, and this is the, where the canoe yeah, launch is over canoe here. Launch, yeah. Sonny, did you get the canoe launch? Yeah. Thank you. And of course, they had somebody's shopping cart. Yeah, you were saying, Ken, that a lot of shopping carts wind oh, up. Yeah. Uh, study with viruses and stuff, because now it's an epidemiological study. In other words, how are people getting sick? Are they or not? Yeah. And is it a result of contact with the waterways yeah. or not? Uh, so the district contracted out to uh, U of I School of Public Health yeah. that has experience you know, in epidemiological studies. Uh, we don't. So that, that's why we're not particularly involved in this this portion of the study. You know, we did the early water quality, you know, and virus stuff, uh, microbiology I, stuff. I figure the University of Illinois is more than qualified to do these things. Oh, yeah. And across here, these, these are walkways, bike walks, and... Uh, yeah, this is all... Uh, the park district put all this in, in the under, uh, under bridge uh, pay, uh, passageways. We had problems with people breaking the locks and living in there for a while when they, really? first, when they first opened. Oh, well, I know that there were a lot of people living under Devon by the bridge yeah. there for a while. Probably some of those same people are from Devon we were talking about before. <laughs> because activity, I know on North Avenue there was a lot of activity like that at one yeah. time. That was the, the great bridges. thing about when Commander Boggs was here, I got, to, I got all the scoops on the vice. Well, they had their own gymnasium set up under bridges. Whoa! With weights and, and exercise wow. machines and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, there, was a, there was a guy that had a TV connected to the light pole underneath Addison. Right. You know. Wow. Had the thing wired right to the city light pole. Of course, you only saw a TV when the lights came on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that, but at least it's something. Yeah. I'll tell you, there were a couple of guys that had dumb, dug bunkers on the banks here. Yeah. They were living in dugouts. Bright, for bright people, to be, too. For, pardon? Bright people that have just basically oh, yeah. gone off the deep end. Yeah. Well, you know, you're talking about somebody who's pretty industrious who yeah. could probably make a decent living doing something. Yeah. Now, 
Let's saw Legion Park on both sides. The next time you have to Legionnaire's disease? <laughs> no, I know Legion Park. That's where I used to hang out growing up. Oh, cool. It was all weeds before yeah. the Park District took it over. And ruined it. <laughs> that was only about five years ago. Oh, really? <laughs> no. The, no, it's true. That's right up Lincoln Avenue, right? Yeah. Yeah, they, that, that, another motel missing. Yeah, the one on the corner, Riverside. Well, we're on the docks right near Lawrence Avenue at the end of our trip, and uh, we want to thank our host very much, President of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, Terry O'Brien, and the PC1, which is not the politically correct one, but, but the pollution control, control, control one. Because anybody who knows the Metropolitan, well, they're, they're much, I'm not going to get into that whole politically correct thing. It makes me sick. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so this is what these guys, so five days a week, these guys go to different parts of the of the North River, of the Chicago River and the North Shore uh, Branch. Uh, various branches of the, yeah. uh, the river system throughout Cook County, doing yeah. their monitoring and taking samples, as you've seen on this trip. And it wasn't just a really nice trip along a body of water, but these guys are actually making sure that the levels are such that it's like people won't start getting radiated from living nearby it and um, other Radi interesting things like that. is a little <laughs> extreme, but... Uh, Way extreme, no, they're, but they're, <laughs> they're out there just, uh, like I said, just making sure that uh, the water environment is improving throughout the county and uh, we're keeping uh, tabs on it. Now, it sounds good, and we want to thank you very much. We want to thank our entire technical crew, Cindy Hirsch. We want to thank Ken Johnson for all the expert help along the way today. And I have no idea how I'm packaging this and putting it on the air, but I'll sit down with the footage, and we'll do at least one show, maybe two out of it, depending on how much footage we have. And in the meantime, the most important thing to let you know is that I'm really Marty Levinson, and so is he. And uh, we're glad you joined us th this week on the Northtown News Magazine. And thanks, Sonny. Check us out on the website, ntnm.org. And don't forget, our most watched show ever is the Deep Tunnel Show, which if you go to www.ntnm.org, you'll be able to watch. Thanks, Sonny. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye. Would you like to...